And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to thy word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Words from today's Holy Gospel. Today, our Lord filled the hungry with good things. So desirous was the Blessed Virgin for union with God, a deeper union, the deepest union that would be possible, that the only way to console her was to send the Son, the Son of God. And He came and He filled Our Lady with Himself. He filled the hungry with good things. Taking some of the most pure blood pulsating in her immaculate heart to form His sacred flesh, his sacred heart, his sacred humanity in her loving womb. If you know the litany of the sacred heart of Jesus, one of the invocations says, heart of Jesus, formed by the Holy Ghost in the womb of the Virgin Mother. Have mercy on us. And it's a long-standing tradition that how that heart was formed was from the blood pulsating in the heart of Mary. So from the immaculate heart came the sacred heart. Today, the Word then was made flesh. The Son of God entered the Ark of the Covenant, being made a little less than the angels in His human nature. Listen to Venerable Mary of Agrida's description of the Incarnation. She says, In comparison to the Incarnation, all the works of God, odd extra, that's all created things, Although they are in themselves great and stupendous and marvelous, more to be admired than comprehended, are only a small spark issuing from the unfathomable abyss of the divinity. This great mystery of vesting himself in a passable and mortal nature is preeminently the great work of his infinite power and wisdom and the one which immeasurably excels all the other works and wonders of his powerful arm. For in this mystery, not merely a spark of the divinity, but the whole vast volcano of the infinite Godhead broke forth and communicated itself to men, uniting itself by an indissoluble and eternal union to our terrestrial human nature. Venerable Mary of Agrida, the whole vast volcano of the infinite Godhead broke forth and communicated itself to men in the Incarnation. Wow. Those were amazing words to describe the Incarnation. Now, today, radical environmentalists are running all over the place and we call them what? Earth lovers, right? And tree huggers. Well, that's the devil always mocking and perverting truths of God. And amazingly, there's an element of Catholic truth in these titles that point to the mystery of the incarnation and what our Lord came to do. Our Lord came down from heaven and loved the earth so much that he became man. Taking the dust of Adam's flesh and uniting it to his own divine person, communicating to humanity divine truth, goodness, beauty, and virtue. Earth lover. Then he would later hug the tree of life, the cross as is shown in the stations of the cross. Tree hugger. In his masterpiece, the brothers Karamazov, Fyodor Dostoevsky, has Father Zosima recommending his monks to hug the earth. Why? To imitate the divine model, he quoted from St. John's Gospel, unless a grain of wheat fall into the ground and die, it remains alone. No wonder making a genuflection is so important. We need to come into contact with the earth to remind ourselves of how the word of God was made flesh and dwelt among us. The devil is always mocking the truths of God. He's always perverting them. He's, he's, as it were, he's saying, well, you have your earth lover, Jesus, and I've got mine. You've got your tree hugger, and I've got my tree huggers. On March 25th, 1858, on this feast of the Annunciation in Lourdes, France, St. Bernadette received a vision at the grotto 
for the first time since completing her 15 days of visits, which ended on March 4th. But in that span of 15 visits to the grotto, first of all, we note that St. Bernadette, she grew stronger and deepened her faith with God. Since the 15 days visits to the grotto represent the 15 mysteries of the rosary, heaven has given us a little hint as to what the rosary can do for us too: strengthen our faith, strengthen our faith. She was able to stand fast against the atheistic, rationalistic, governmental leaders of the town, as well as the province, as well as various other trying people and circumstances. What helped her to do this? Humility and piety. Humility and piety. Recall that during the visions, she prayed the rosary kneeling on the ground. She lit candles, bathed in the waters, drank the waters, kissed the ground, hugged the earth, as it were. All humble and pious actions. All contrary to modern, enlightened man's way of thinking. Yet they all work to strengthen her faith. Now, it's interesting to note that during this time, the little saint was often both praised and yet attacked. How did she fare in this trial? One report of an expert, he said, she is in excellent health and appears indifferent not only to the admiration, but also to the ridicule of which she is often the object. So humility and piety can do that for us too. And to think now that St. Bernadette is incorrupt, one of the most incorruptible saints we have, just as she was impervious to corruption in life, so too to death. Hmm. Although many others were going regularly to the grotto with some wonderful cures being reported, St. Bernadette stayed away. But on the eve of this feast in 1858, she awoke to a voice moving her to return to the grotto on this day, which she did with the permission of her parents. Saints respond to the grace of God and she did not go on her own initiative. After the 15th days were over, she stayed home, waited until God moved her to go back. Humility is knowing your place and taking your place. And she went to take her place when God pointed it out. So she went back. And when she arrived early in the morning on the Annunciation, Our Lady was already in the grotto, looking at all the pilgrims and nodding to some and smiling at others. As the Son has so loved us, so loved man as to come down from heaven to earth, so did the mother. Her being present in the grotto when Bernadette arrived is important because it's a sign to us. It's important to us the sign that she, the woman, is always there welcoming the pilgrims and hearing their pleas. If you've ever been to Lourdes, you'll know what I'm talking about Many who've been there have felt the mysterious presence at the grotto and the peace it brings. And they're drawn back to that grotto over and over. The Lord continues his incarnation in the Eucharist. He is present in our tabernacles. And Our Lady seems to have her tabernacle on earth at the grotto in Lourdes. Now, after praying the rosary, she was moved to ask three times for her name gaining courage from a special grace to ask the third time. Sometimes we have to keep asking. It was then that Our Lady made a very beautiful gesture with her hands. And she, as it were, like the priest at Mass. And she said, I am the Immaculate Conception and bowed her head in humility. Smiling wonderfully, she then disappeared. When Bernadette later showed others the motion and saying of Our Lady, Many would just break out into tears at the beauty of it all. Later on the feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, St. Bernadette would see Our Lady at the grotto for the last time. She later said, I've never seen her look so beautiful. Remember Blessed Jacinta when she saw Our Lady the first time? She said over and over and over, Oh, what a beautiful lady, what a beautiful lady. What a beautiful lady. Virtue, truth, goodness, humility, These make someone beautiful. And this is what humility and piety can do to our souls. 
The Lord comes and fills it with good things. He makes it beautiful and able to grow in all the virtues. King David says in the Psalms, abyss calls unto abyss. The saints have said the abyss is our soul. The humbler the soul, the deeper the abyss. And the more the abyss of love, truth, goodness, beauty, come and fill it up. The more we are willing to love the earth, as it were, in humility, and die like the grain of wheat, the more we're willing to hug the tree of the cross, the more God is then free to fill our abyss, free to communicate His volcano of goodness, truth, mercy, beauty, and love to us, and through us to others in great abundance. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. And our Lord came and filled the hungry with good things. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.